Hi again, it's Ryan. I've made a couple of mentions recently about doing a video on a drive repair on this SX, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, this repair has already been done, so I'm going to show you a few things recorded now about getting in there and looking at the drive, and I'm going to have some pictures in here from when I did the original repair. So we're going to kind of cut between current video and some still pictures. And when I got this thing, I got it from somebody who used it in college years ago, and then it sat in storage for a long time. It turned on, but there were two obvious problems with it right off the bat. First was no sound, and that was something I fixed in the last episode. The other thing was that the drive didn't work. Now here's some original footage of how the drive behaved before the repair. You can see that it looks like the drive attempted to do something briefly, but very quickly returned a file not found error. There was a little bit of noise from the drive as well, but that didn't really pick up very well on the video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get in there and I'm going to show you how to remove the drive and this plastic storage bin. And uh, we'll talk about the process uh, of getting that out. Okay. First thing we have to do is get the case off, which if you've watched my last video is not that big of a problem. These side pieces come off, there's two screws in the back and then they slide out. There's three screws in here along the side and there's a screw at each top corner. So I'm going to take those out and then I'll start the video up again once the case is off. Here's the inside of the SX. Now let's just look at the things that concern us at the moment. We've got the storage bin here. We've got the drive, you can see part of it underneath. We've got some wires coming off the drive that connect to the drive controller board back here. This whole long board here is the drive board. Now to get to the drive we can't just take the storage bin off because it connects with a couple of screws here that go in from the side. So we can't get to those to take that off um, by itself. So we have to take the whole unit out. To do that we're going to start by taking out some screws. There's one here and one here. There's one here and here. So we'll start by taking those screws out. Alright, we've got those four. You can see I can lift up the whole thing here with the drive and the storage bin. So, let's pull off these connectors. And get them out of their clips. This one and the black one. Now I'm going to take out the cartridge port as well. Two screws here and here.
And I'm just going to put these screws back in so I don't lose them. And now to get the assembly out, we just kind of slide it back a little bit. Tilt it up in the front. And it comes right out. Ta-da! Alright, so here's the drive unit and the storage bin assembly. Now what I'm going to do, you'll see here that they're only held together by this metal bracket. There's one on each side. So I could just take the storage compartment off, or I can unscrew these and I can lift the storage compartment and the bracket off with it. So that's what I'm going to do. just slide right off. Take this disc out. So now that we have this off, a couple things to talk about. These drives have two separate motors. You've got the drive motor here which, let me flip it over, comes through here, connected with a belt to this flywheel. These markings on here are for timing if you need to do an alignment. But this is what spins the disc. The drive motor spins the disc. This is the stepping motor. This moves the reed right head forward and back. And it's called a stepping motor because it moves in tiny little increments. Now I want to show you some pictures of what the drive motor looked like originally. This is an overhead shot of the unit before I started disassembling anything. I've circled the drive motor here in red. You can see just how rusted the top of it is. Now the rest of the unit really didn't show much signs of rust. Um, one of the screws in the back had a little bit of rust, but all the components, the main uh, case, everything really looked pretty good, so I'm not sure why that motor uh, rusted so much worse than anything else in the system. But it was a sign that there was probably something going on there. And here's another shot with the drive removed, and you can see um, also that I left the mounting brackets for the storage bin on in this case. But you get another good look at uh, how rusted that motor was. The motor's only held on with a few small screws, and you can see in this photo, after I removed the screws, I turned it a little bit sideways to get a good shot of the model number. So you can kind of get a sideways shot of... Uh, the rust on the side. Now at this point there were really two avenues to approach this repair. The first was I could swap out the motor with a different motor. Uh, that was my original plan. Had a hard time finding a matching motor at first and it looked like it might be kind of a pain to actually do it. So the second option was swap out the entire drive mechanism. And I had a 1541 with an ALPS mechanism that I could swap out. So I proceeded to pull the mechanism out of the 1541 and that's when I realized that yeah this wasn't going to be very easy to do. If you look at this picture you can see the two units side by side and it's quite clear that the connectors are wired differently. The one for the SX only has the two connectors, the one for the 1541 has several. So if I were to go that route then I'd have to you know, rewire it and redo all the connectors. So that way looked even more complicated. 
So I thought, okay, let's just swap out the motor. Now I found a motor from a seller on eBay in somewhere in Eastern Europe. I don't remember exactly where now. And the model number was slightly different. And the original was LC177B. And the one that was being sold was LC177J. And apart from the model number itself, the the motors looked identical. They were the same size. They looked to be wired the same way. So I took a chance on it figuring this, you know, the J model was probably just, you know, a later revision. Uh, and it ended up that it, it did work out just fine. But I couldn't find a B version anywhere uh, except within, you know, a Commodore drive. So I was hoping the J would work, and, and it did. And when the motor arrived, it had very, very short wires coming out of it. Uh, unlike the original, which had quite long wires that had to snake along the length of the drive mechanism and then get soldered in the back. So I had to add some new wire lengths. And I used 20 gauge wire along with some heat shrink tubing in order to give it a little extra strength and to make sure that as the computer's getting moved around, the wires don't um, come loose or create a short circuit or anything like that. So once the wires are uh, soldered on, it's just a question of getting everything reinstalled. Now, in this shot, you can see that the wires are running here on the left side of the drive, and then they're soldered on in the back, and they're held on with a plastic clip at one spot, and there's a, a zip tie on there as well. And if you notice carefully, you can see that the drive hasn't, or the motor hasn't been attached yet. If it was attached, you'd see the little pulley sticking up through that hole in the bottom left corner. Okay, and Remember, there's a belt that's going to run around that pulley on the motor up around the flywheel. And if you don't have your wires carefully controlled, they could interfere with the belt, which would cause all kinds of problems. So you do have to make sure that you've got your wires pretty well controlled there on the left side of the drive. And everything is um, in place securely enough that as you move the computer around those wires aren't going to jostle up against the drive belt once it's all fully put back together. And at this point it's just a question of putting everything back together again. And you just follow the steps from before in reverse. Now I will say that before I reassembled everything I did change the drive belt. I did uh, lube the rails, gave it a good lube job, and I cleaned the head. And once it was reassembled, everything worked perfectly. So now I had a uh, perfectly working drive. Again, the only problem at that point was the sound, which is now also fixed. So hopefully you found this interesting. It's not a typical kind of repair that you see uh, that needs to be done on these old machines. So if you ever run across something like this, I hope this helps you. And even if you never run across it before, I hope you find it interesting. Thanks for watching.